P15 dual band amateur radio handy talkie from Max Talker. Newer model, just hit the market. We're going to dive into the unboxing today. Check the SWR on the rubber duck power output. So let's get into it. Hey there, and thank you for stopping by Nuka Vault Readiness. Glad you're here with us. And today we're going to be looking at this new dual bander from Max Talker Radios. Uh, they were nice enough to send me a new transceiver to test out for them. It, actually, the box over there, it's a pair of them. So we're going to open them up, um, or open up the box rather, kind of see what all comes in it. And we'll do our usual power testing that we like to do on uh, any new handy talkies we get here, as you might well know if you're familiar with the channel. And we're also going to go ahead and check the SWR on the rubber duck. It's actually got a little bit different design, so I kind of want to get into that too. If something new we're going to try today. Uh, again, thanks to Mac Talk, uh, Max Talker Radios for reaching out to me and gifting these to me to try out for them. I'm going to put their website down in the description. Um, their main website, and I'm also going to put a link to the Amazon uh, store for them where uh, you could check this out. I believe they're about $32 for a single, and you can get the pair of them, I believe, for just over $60, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but information will be down in the description. So without further ado, let's open it up and let's see what all comes in the box. All right, so we've opened the box here, and I've only pulled out one whole set of what comes with a transceiver. Again, they were nice enough to send me a pair of these, but you get the idea and we're gonna go over the few things that you get with each transceiver. So of course you get the main transceiver itself. The battery on it is a 2200 milliamp hour. Um, it does have the three sensors on the back, positive, negative, and your temperature control, which is always a plus in my opinion. Uh, overall the plastic, or excuse me, overall the body is a heavier duty plastic. Um, I like it. It's definitely a more rugged feel. It reminds me more of a uh, Baofeng UV uh, 9R, uh, which is the outdoorsy radio. It has the pretty much the, the basic functions of similar radios like Baofengs and such. Uh, the, the buttons here are raised. It's very tactile. I actually like the feel of this. It doesn't feel like it's right into the plastic. You have your PTT your uh, light button, one would be for your FM radio, your siren, it comes with a belt clip, I've already attached that as you can see. Uh, one thing I do like about this is the on and off knob here. Welcome, channel mode. Hopefully you can hear that there, I didn't have the mic close enough, but the, the volume control is actually not super stiff, but it, it doesn't just give. And I like that. Sometimes when I've had them on my backpack or my pocket, if your arm grazes them, um, you know, on other radios, they seem very flimsy and it just is easy to turn it off or uh, turn it on rather. And then next thing you know, you've got a dead walkie on you. So uh, I do like that. Plus there to uh, Max Talker on that. I do like that design. The rubber duck itself, I mentioned this is probably about a minute ago, that it's got a really cool design here. I don't know why I think it is, but it's kind of like a texture plastic here. But otherwise, it's your very basic, you know, almost like needle shape here. But anyway, it's a little different. I just thought the design was cool. And it does seem like it goes on there pretty snug. Uh, it actually feels like it takes a few more turns than usual to put one of these on. But anyway, uh, two pin Kenwood connector as usual over there. And actually on the bottom of it here is, it's right there. Here's your USB-C charging. Again, always a plus. You could just charge these with uh, maybe a small power solar brick, your solar generator and such, or a plug from the wall. Always great. Uh, you'll see over here, you do get your standard AC cradle that you can plug it, uh, charge it with. You get your earpiece, your little over the ear earpiece there. It actually comes with a USB-A to USB-C. It's hiding in there somewhere. There it is. Uh, charging cable. So plus, you get an extra cable. You get the stylus wrist strap. 
And then up here you get a programming, a uh, programming cable as well. Just USB-A on one end, Kingwood connector to the other. And uh, speaking with the programming cable, it is chirp capable. It, it is made to, uh, um, to work with chirp. So you can go in through chirp and it's going to be the model P15 again by Max Talker. A uh, couple things here on this is it is not IP rated at all. So there is no dust, no water uh, rating on this. Uh, no big deal overall uh, if you're if you're careful, but I guess it technically wouldn't be an outdoorsy radio. Uh, I'll show this here in a second. I actually did take it out with me a little bit in the field today running errands and did some audio testing. So we'll get to those. Uh, again, it's a dual bander. So you get VHF, UHF on it. It does receive AM airband. I've programmed or I messed around on the VFO mode on that. So you can get airband AM on it. And uh, you get your FM radio. There is not a function on here to immediately go to NOAA. So you would have to manually put in your NOAA frequency. Um, which is not hard to find, but I do understand sometimes that that could be a kind of a minus that you just don't have an immediate button to go to um, NOAA. But, you know. And then it uh, does have 999 channels of, <laughs> of memory channels that you can save. So. For all you that like to go frequency crazy, you got plenty of, plenty of storage on here. So no worries on that. And another cool function that this has is, and I haven't been able to get it work uh, just by myself. So I may have to get some help from uh, fellow hams or whoever and out in the field. It does have a copy frequency a, a function. And what it means is you can press, I believe it's the exit button on here. And if you were to hold it, while the radio's on, it will actually say scanning, and it, up here it will say scanning UHF, and somehow it can capture the frequency that another radio is transmitting on. Again, it does just say UF, UHF, so uh, there's some questions I'd like to follow up with Max Talker on if that's the only uh, band it works on. It will then capture it, and you have the option then to save said frequency that you just captured. Cool in theory. I haven't got to work again just playing around with it myself. So, definitely seems cool though. All right. Well, that is the radio out of the box. Um, we're going to go ahead and do the power test uh, to see the, the radio's output power. And while we're at it this time, we're not going to put a dummy load. We're actually going to put the antenna on that SureComp meter. And we're going to read what the SWR is of this. I'm kind of curious. So, Let's dive into that now. Something else I forgot to mention while I had everything unpacked here on the table was that you do get a, a high gain antenna with it as well. Again, you get two of these because there's a pair in the box if you so decide to get a pair. Uh, and this says it's a diamond brand antenna. It is the RH771, RH-771. But I did notice there's no markings on here at all minus what's on the antenna. So I'm not sure about it. We're not going to test this today. Um, so I do have some questions, but that will be something I'll do later. But overall, again, it looks like your standard high gain antenna you can buy for um, handheld such as this. Okay, guys, so we've got our SureCom little SWR meter on here. Uh, links up here if you want to go check out the video I did on the review of this. It's great again for your little Little transceivers like this, you actually have a dummy load that can handle a peak of 25 watts, so it can even check some mobile uh, units if you want. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on the radio, and I apologize about the ring light getting in there. We're going to try to keep it out of shot for y'all, so. Welcome. Channel mode. All right, you probably heard that. The backlight's on. I know the light's on, so it's really hard to see it, but when the backlight dies off, you could actually see this uh, monochrome uh, just black and white LCD screen and actually works quite well in the daylight. There you go. So even with the bright ring light on, you can still read those really well. And I do like these monochromes a little bit more than the, um, than the other LCD with the purple background that you usually see like on Balfangs and other things. I do like just this standard black and white. It's easier on my eyes. Anyway, 
So we'll go ahead and we're going to turn the Surecom on and I'm going to go ahead and set um, VFO. We're going to do the two meter uh, calling frequency at 146.520. Then we're going to do 446 for the 70 centimeter on here. So I'm going to set those real quick and then um, we're going to turn it on and we're going to see what we're looking at for our power and such. Okay, so hopefully I've got that down here so you can see. So at the top here, you would have your SWR, your forward power, and your reversed power. Uh, in the event we do have some SWR, you'll see what's be going back into the transceiver. And I'm going to pull it up on shot here. So we're going to start with, we're up here on line one. So we're going to start at 146.520, and we are going to be operating on high power. So I'm going to just, and I know it's sideways here. And again, I'm inside the shack, so probably will not be hitting anybody on actual frequency. So we, we should be okay on that. So I'm going to go ahead and we're gonna power it up and we're gonna see what we get. So as you saw there, we got over five watts, but we're looking at a VSWR or SWR of about 2.74. At one point there it hit three. So reverse wattage. Um it always kind of dies back down once you press the button. We're gonna do it again real quick. So as you see, you have a SWR of three, five watts going out, you have 1.13 coming back at you. Now the radio is horizontal. I'm just gonna be out of shot here for a second, but all right, so that was for the two meters. So now we're gonna go ahead and go down to the 446, which is the 70 centimeter here. And again, the radio is gonna be horizontal, but hopefully that really should make a difference for just this. So we're gonna see now what we get on SWR for this. which is even worse. At high power, we're looking at 3.5 watts and 2.49 uh, reverse power. Our SWR is at 11.2. Not good at all. Even turning the radio upwards really didn't do much. It still it actually peaked at about 10 there and it died off right at the last second. So, this rubber duck would be a no-go, in my opinion. Even two is high. Well, heck, three was even high because you have a watt going back into your transceiver. So, this would be a no-go in my book for this rubber duck. But, I am going to go ahead and show you now a couple clips and let them play here about, about 15 to 30 seconds each. Uh, one clip, I did hit a repeater, uh, tested out on a repeater rather, that was several miles away, I think about three or four. And... I know being that close, you're going to probably sound really clean going into a repeater, but I'm going to let you listen to the audio quality of this as it just comes back, of course, from the repeater to the radio and how the other operator sounded. Uh, and it would be just with the phone's uh, audio. There was no external mic hooked up, so you can hear that better. Uh, we're going to do that, and then I programmed a NOAA station in just so you can hear how it sounded sitting and receiving NOAA. So let's play those. Q and J portable. Okay, I five Q and J. KG five Z O Y. How do you copy? KG five C O Y, this is K I five Q and J. Yes sir, I copy. Appreciate you uh, calling back there. I just actually just tested out a new uh, handy talkie. It was uh, could you give me a signal report on how I'm coming through, sir? I would give you also a solid about 5'8", sir. There's a little bit of uh, white noise in the background, but not much. Uh, I'm actually near Valley Ranch, portable. So again, just wanted to test out and see how I sounded, sir, reaching in the local repeater. The more frequent gale force gusts will be felt in the southern parts of the bay, while infrequent gusts to gale will be possible be in northern parts of the bay. Additional small craft and So as you can hear, the audio quality, or at least the receiving audio quality, is really good. And uh, being even close to a repeater, I, I got a strong signal report that I was coming in well. So truly, if it is over, you know, around two point something SWR, I mean, we saw it almost got up to three there at least at one point. Even if it's that and for brief transmissions, it still sounds clear coming in. So it's not enough loss of power that it affected it at all. Uh, funny enough, I did 
also move up from the natural calling frequency. I moved into the 147 megahertz range and did another test with the meter. And the SWR actually went down to a respectable and acceptable close to about a two SWR overall. Again, guys, these are handy talkies. You know, we're not really talking about super fine equipment here. I do not believe this is a super heterodyne, uh, what is that called, transmitter on the inside. These are exactly what they look like. They are for on-the-go comms, uh, 5 watts, a little over 5 watts, as you could see. Um, but that's what they are. So, overall, I still give it a pretty good rating. That, of course, worries me with SWR, but... In a jam, any radio is better than no radio, as I always say. I want to thank Max Talker again for sending these out to me. Let me try them, review them for them. Again, description down below. I'll put their main website and also the Amazon page where you can get these. If you found this useful, I appreciate if you shared it to anybody. And remember, always be getting ready. We see you around next time.